Praise the Lord, it's church time. Amen. It's good to be back in the house of God. Now, we're still few in number for some folks that are sick and got some other different medical issues going on. We need to remember all of them. But uh, where two or three are gathered in his name, he said, I'll be in the midst. Right. Amen. Any prayer requests today? Uh, yes, I have. for Israel. Yes. Yes. Right. Everything else is going on in this world. Yes. Any other requests? I want a praise report for my friend Shannon that I've been requesting prayer for about cancer. Um, her cancer number 
numbers that were down. Right? Praise God. Like, up, like uh, I don't know about you know cancer numbers or anything, but it was like six thousand something. She said it's down to like a thousand. Oh, well, right? praise so, God. I, Amen. I, I, I,
Thank you. 
start out with, he'll roll me over the tide, and he will if we'll let him on it. Well, oh, Steve, I'm Facebook. She was posting, oh, pray for us. We're 
thinking about getting back into church. Well, I tell you what, you go with that attitude, you're not going with the right attitude. That's right. Number one. And number one, if you put all in, you give your all to God, you focus on Him, He'll make your load light. Yes, yes. He'll make it easy to follow Him. Yes, yes. I'm not saying life's perfect, no. but you know what? It's harder when you're straddling the fence. That's right. When you're like, oh, I want to serve the Lord, oh, but I don't want to give up this. I yeah. still want to do the things that God don't want me to do. Yeah. But, you know, I do believe in Him, and I do want to, you know, serve Him. If you go back and forth like that, it's going to be hard, I'm telling yes, you. Plain and simple. Mm -hmm. But if you give it all to God, He'll help make your load light. Amen? I don't know. I'll stop preaching. I'm wrong. Before or not, but it's heaven's bright shore.
time the Lord gave me peace with trouble all around. He calmed the storm in me. And I remember when I cried out, He saved my soul. Some have their doubts, but I know that I know that I know that it's a direct line to the throne room where you can find someone who cares. And if you need some proof, I can tell you there's power, power in prayer. And it's a direct line to the throne room where you can find someone who cares. And if you need some proof, I can tell you there's power, power in prayer. I can tell you about the time the Lord gave me peace with trouble all around. He calmed the storm in me. And I remember when I cried out, the Lord saved my soul. Some have their doubts. But I know that I know that I know that it's a direct line to the throne room where you can find someone who cares. And if you need some proof, I can tell you there's power, power in prayer. See proof of power of prayer many times over the years. You know, many, many times. You know, there was a time I could tell when my boys were little and I didn't have much money. I was living on welfare. Didn't have any food. Didn't know how I was going to feed them. I had some ladies show up at my door with a bag full of groceries. I had told nobody. All I did was pray. You know, that's what God does. He sends people to help you. So don't turn a blind eye to help, especially when it comes from the Lord. Amen? And you know, God has saved my soul many times. He saved me from many situations. But the one that stands out in my mind, too, is when he saved my boy Ian from a fever seizure. He stopped breathing. His lips turned black. His eyes rolled in the back of his head. He quit breathing. And all of a sudden, my mama didn't stop praying. Me and my mama both. And all of a sudden, he just took this big gasp. You know, God saved him for a reason. God saved our children for a reason. Not for them to die lost and to go to hell. He saved them for a reason. He saved my oldest from being hit by a car when he was just like two years old. You know, God does mighty things. So we got to plead that blood over our children and keep praying for them because there's power in prayer. Amen? Amen. We lived up north and pastored a Christian fellowship. Uh, we had a gentleman that sang this song a lot. So just listen to the words to this song and what this cripple boy talked about. A cripple boy sat alone in a wheelchair watching Oh, will I be a cripple boy? 
because that boy was crippled and he was praying and he found his answer. That just goes to show us several things that if we earnestly pray, we'll find an answer. Yes, uh, and number two, if we're, we're disabled in some way, shape, form, or fashion on this world, when we get there, if we serve Him, we're not going to be that way anymore. Amen. What touched me about that, brother Gilbert, was God's no respecter of persons. That's right. He loves all of us. <laughs> I don't know if I can do this or not, but I'm going to try it. Haven't done it in a coon age. <laughs>
never said that I would give you silver or gold, or that you would never said that I would give you silver or gold, that you would never feel the fire or shiver in the cold, but I did say, Jordan, just 
just the inner into rest, but I did say, I will on the other side, yeah, oh, and I did say, I'll try it. Let's go to First Thessalonians chapter five today. Praise the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter five. Let's start at verse one. It says, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety and then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. He was telling them here that the troubles and things that they seen going on in their day. Yeah. He didn't need to write to them. Yeah. But he's going to anyhow. Yeah. The troubles that we see going on today in our lives. Yeah. We shouldn't need anybody to tell us about it and to warn us to straighten our lives up. And yeah. uh, as the old saying goes, uh, uh, Sister Deb and fly right. right. Yep. Yeah. But unfortunately, we do. Yeah. Because even in the church house, we have backbiters, yeah. uh, false prophets, false teachers, uh, folks up a shouting and a carrying on that uh, don't have enough of power to cast a headache out of a mosquito. Yeah. Yeah. 
But not only that, they're doing it all thinking that they've got all kinds of time to make things right with them and the Lord. But the day of the Lord is at hand. I'm not saying he's coming tomorrow at midnight because I don't know. Jesus doesn't even know. Only God the Father knows. But if the Lord allows it, this world could last another million years before he sends his son back. Or it could last just a few more days. But either way, it's time that the church and the, uh, uh, get their lives right and in order with Jesus Christ so that we can start truly compelling them to come in from the highways and the hedges. Yes. Yes. Before it's everlasting too late yes. for them as well as us. Yes. Verse 4 says, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You don't have to go here. I'm just going to go read it real quick. You can write it down if you don't want to turn there and read it later. But it's Romans 13 and 12. Romans 13, verse 12 says, The night is fair spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, which is sin. And let us put on the armor of light, which is Jesus Christ. So what he was telling them there in verse 4 was, because they had the light of Je the light, which was Jesus Christ, glory to God, that they already know these things, and that, that when Jesus comes in the thief of the night, it's not going to overtake them, meaning that it's not going to catch them off guard. But I'm afraid to say that in today's church world, there is a whole lot of church going folks going to catch, be called off guard, sister. They're going to be caught off guard because like Angie spoke about earlier, uh, they want to go to church. Yeah. They want to start going to church. They want to start serving the Lord, but they don't want to turn from their wicked way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. We yeah. was told in Scripture that if we would pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways, yeah. uh, that then God or Jesus would hear from our cry from heaven. And he will come and he would heal our land. Yes, he would. This world has turned from God so far that, uh, uh, for lack of better terms, they're going to hell in a handbasket and they're sending everything or, or person with them that is ignorant enough to just follow after man. Yep, amen. Yep, right. My, my. Verse 5 says, Ye are all the children of light, which means Jesus. And the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness, which darkness there is sin. We're not supposed to be anyway. But we got a lot of church going folks that's one way in the presence of Christian folk and in the church house, but yet they're living like devils uh, in behind closed doors. Oh, come on, somebody. It's a good preacher. It's put some meat on your bones if you'll take it. Spiritual bones. Spiritual meat. There we go. Then we got those that get on the gossip box, yeah. find things out about folks' past and they want to bring it up and act like they're true prophets and making a prop a so-called prophecy, which I like to call a prop a lie yeah. in churches today that are tearing folks down. Yeah. But the God that I serve will not tear anyone down. They're, they will whatever he want, what God wants to do is to uh, bring something to your attention so that he can fix it for you. Wow. Not to tear you down. Amen. 
Verse 6 says, Therefore let us not sleep uh-huh. as do others, yeah. but let us watch and be sober. Uh-huh. That sober don't mean drunk. It means uh, of wisdom. Yeah. Watch and pray. Yeah, yeah. clear-minded. Yeah, clear-minded. That sleep is uh, there is telling us not to just have the form of godliness and deny the power thereof. In other words, uh, we don't care what's going on in the church as long as it makes me feel good when I see those lights are flashing or uh, uh, <clears throat> when the preacher knows that I'm shacked up, but, but he still lets me on the pulpit. Preacher knows that I'm, I'm I'm living a lifestyle of homosexuality, but he still lets me on the pulpit. Come on, somebody! Bless the Lord! Bless the Lord! That's what sleep is. Yep. And I'm afraid to say, Sister Angel, we got a lot of pastors and preachers and teachers and evangelists and prophets and prophetess that are asleep today. Yep. Yep. That's true. Thank yep. you, Jesus. My, my, my. And it's so running rampant, so bad in the church house. Oh, and then we got these preachers that's so asleep that uh, that when they know that somebody propped the line, or when they know somebody's not uh, not living like they say they're living it, yeah. they they just. They're, they're too scared, they're too yellow belly to stand up against them because maybe that somebody is somebody who puts a whole lot of this in an offering plate. Close their eyes to First Peter 5 and 8 says this. Be sober, yeah. be vigilant, yeah. because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. What's being being sober is being clear-minded, but what's uh, being vigilant mean? Persevere, not give up. Yeah. Yes. Vigilant. So be clear-minded and, and push through like the woman with the issue of love. Yes, amen. You know, the Bible said that she had went from position to position and spent all that she had. And they, uh, it grew even worse and never was made better until she heard of a man called Jesus that was walking through. And she made up her mind that she was going to be vigilant yes. to get herself to the foot of Jesus Christ, yes. even if it meant all she could touch amen. was the very hill of the garment amen. that he wore. And she knew that she'd be made. Yeah, yes, thank you, Jesus. She could have pushed three or four people aside and, and looked up at that crowd of folks that was uh-huh. thronging Jesus that day and said, forget it. Yeah. I just don't have the strength. Yeah. I don't have the power. Yeah. I can't carry on. Yeah. I don't feel like making myself go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Amen. And she'd have never got what she needed. That's right. Yep. Verse 7 says, For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken (laughs) in the night. Now we all know when it's literal nighttime outside, that's when the body goes to sleep. Uh, Most of the time, unless your work is nighttime and then you sleep during the day. But that's not talking about that kind of sleep. It said, they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that are drunken are drunken in the night. Well, that, that night there, I believe, is talking about the sin. Yep. Uh-huh. It says, they, in other words, they that sin, sin in the night. Uh-huh. Because they try to hide it. Yep. Yep. It's what a lot of so-called church folks are doing today. Yep. Uh, they, they're trying to hide their sin. They're trying to hide their wrongdoings. There's an old saying, you, you may fool the pastor, but you'll never fool God. That's, right. yeah, that's true. That's true. 
And if your pastor is a true pastor and not one of those uh, sleeping in the night sit him or herself, uh, you won't fool them too long because the Holy Ghost will tell on you. It said in verse 8, it said, But let us, who? The church. Yeah. Who are of the day be sober, yeah. putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Yeah. And, the, and for in helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, yes, amen. who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, yeah. we should live together with Him. Amen. In other words, we have to have the hope and the faith in Jesus Christ that His blood was the last lamb sacrifice that was perfect uh, so that you and I could have life everlasting. Uh, and when it said that whether we uh, uh, be uh, awake or asleep is talking about whether we're standing here today or sitting here today like we are or we're laying in a grave somewhere when Jesus splits the eastern skies, glory to God, that we can live together forever with Him. Well, you know, you're preaching when the pit of your stomach goes to cramp is what an old timer told me. When, when, when you, you know, you're preaching when, when, you, when your guts feel like they're being squeezed. Yeah. I feel like I'm plowing pli some boulders for somebody. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we got to get boulders out of our way. Yeah, yes, we do. Sometimes we got to get little pebbles out of our way. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, now I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians 5 and read verse 15 there for you. Second Corinthians what? 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 15. Let's go along with verse 10 there in 1 Thessalonians uh, Five, And it says, And that he died for all, that they which live should not in uh, henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Yeah. See, we got to be crucified with Christ. And if we're truly crucified with Christ, Sister Angie, uh, then we're, we're going to live the best that we can to be Christ-like. Yes, yes. That's what the definition of Christian means. It's not a denomination. It is the definition for Christian is Christ-like. It means that we do everything that we can and strive our best to live like Christ. Yeah. And what is Christ? Love. Yep, yep. We gotta love our neighbors. We gotta love our enemies. Pray for those that finally use us and curse us and all of these things. Yep. It's not easy. Nope. I'll tell you that. Yeah. But we can do it if we're truly washed yeah. in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Verse 11 says of First Thessalonians 5 says, Wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. He's telling them you do it, but do it more. Mm -hmm. Comfort one another with the fact that if you're washed in the blood of Jesus, when you pass from this life unto the next, you've got a life everlasting that's that's not, uh, not nowhere near compared to what we have here. Because there, there's not going to be no more dying, no more saying goodbye, no more sicknesses, no more cancers, no more EMSs, no more heart attacks, open heart surgeries, any of these things uh, that we have to deal with in tribulation while we're here. It'll never be there to be all but love, joy, 
joy, peace, and happiness. Yes, right. There'll be no more disabilities there. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Said to comfort yourselves together yes. and edify one another, even as also you do. Do it more. When we see somebody down and out and, and things, uh, pray for them. And if God opens up the door and opportunity to witness and speak to them, even if they say they're saved, go ahead and witness and speak to them. Because it might just be the, you might just be the one person or or what you, the Holy Spirit leads you to say be the only thing that they'll take it here to. Yeah, uh-huh. My, my. Yeah. Verse 12 says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. And are over you in the Lord, and admonish you. When it says to admonish you, it means to warn you, or to reprimand you uh, firmly. We live in a day and time in a society that if someone gets reprimanded uh, by their pastor uh, or, the, or the, the leader that the Lord has set over top of them, if they're uh, given a warning or reprimand, uh, reprimanded, they want to get mad and jump up and fly off to the next church that tickles their fancy. But we have to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord in every situation. Verse 13 says, And to esteem them, talking about your your pastors, the ones that you consider your spiritual leader over your life, very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. With an S. Not yourself. Singular. Self. Meaning everybody. It says, now we exalt you, brethren. Warn them that are unruly or disorderly or out of order. Right. Yeah. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Yeah. Be patient towards all men. Yeah. Or all men. Yeah. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. Yeah. But ever follow that which is good, yeah. both among yourselves and all men. Yeah. Well, we got church folks that, that needs to hear that one right there. Because yeah. uh, the first thing they want to do if somebody uh, hurts their little pee-picking feelings is just go out want to go out and cause uh, chaos and trouble in the church. Yeah. Want to go out running the mouth, glory to God. Yeah. Want to go out trying to kill the brother or the sister. Hmm. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. But ever follow that which is good. Don't mean that we're not going to make a make a mistake or slip up. But the Bible also tells us that, that we can be angry as long as we don't sin in that anger. Both among yourselves and to all men. Then verse 16, it says, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Well, I don't know how in the world you can pray without ceasing because without ceasing means never stop. Well, if if I'm constantly praying uh, and things, I'd never get nothing done. I wouldn't be able to do my job. Wrong. Praying without ceasing is to always keep the love of Jesus Christ on your mind and your heart. And when things come to you, Say a prayer even if you can't say it out loud. Say it in your mind. And sometimes it's better to say these prayers, Sister Joyce, in her mind than it is out loud. Because if it's in her mind, God in heaven knows and Satan doesn't. But if we say it out loud, then he can also hear. Verse 18 said, In everything, you hear me girls? Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 
So letting everything give thanks means to be uh, content and happy with what you got. Right. I had a pastor some years ago just say humble. Yeah. Yes. He yeah. said, uh, Pastor Billy Evans from Dorothy. Years ago when the boys were babies, no matter what energy, he said stay humble. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's good advice for everybody. There's always somebody that works right than you are. That's right. Verse 19 says, quench not the Spirit. Well, we got the Spirit being quenched all over churches today. All over denominations today. Why? Because, oh, well, we got to come in. We got to do this at this time. We got to do that at this time. You're going to sing this song here, and they're going to sing that one there. Uh, uh, Then we got to be out by this time because we all got to go meet at uh, Arby's or Applebee's. Oh, come on choking the spirit and the life of Jesus Christ right out of the church. Therefore, you no longer have a church. You have a clubhouse. Yeah, amen. Bless you, Lord. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Quench not the spirit. Right. When that spirit moves, yes, it's good to have structure in order, but when the spirit of God begins to move, throw that structure in order out the door and allow the spirit of God to move upon you and the church yeah. the people that are there because oh. God can do more in yeah. two minutes that's what we can do with all the structuring. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And don't get me wrong, Facebook and uh, YouTube and church. There has to be order yeah, yeah. in what we do. Yeah. Yeah. But when God comes on the scene with that sweet Holy Ghost, we need to allow Him to take control uh, and take authority above what order we think that we've got the church meeting set for that day. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 20 says, Despise not prophesying. Well, prophesying is preaching first and foremost. Then it can become a personal prophecy or a prophecy spoken to an entire church body. But the first and foremost operation of prophecy is to preach. People think we hear that word prophecy or prophesying and they automatically think it's a word from God to someone in a yeah I say unto thee manner or to a church uh, from one person uh, speaking out in, in uh, over a church body, but it's not. Yep, yep. Those are just two other uh, aspects of prophesying. Mm-hmm. But preaching is first. Amen. Preaching what? The Word of God. Amen. Verse 21 says, Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Thank you, Jesus. And it doesn't mean to uh, prove all things by what someone says or what someone says God told them. It's proven by the Word of God. 1 John 4 and 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. What does that mean to try and test the Spirit? It means to watch it. See if, they're, uh, if they have good fruit. Yes. Right. To watch, watch that person. Mm-hmm. Uh, and see if the fruit that they're bearing is a ripe fruit, godly fruit, yeah. or if it's rotten to the core. Yeah. Yeah. We all know if it's rotten to the core, then it's not it's not of God. Amen. But if the fruit's good and ripe for the picking, then it's of God. Verse 22. Abstain from all appearances of evil. 
which means to restrain one's self from doing or enjoying things that is not of God. Now, we all know that if we work a job in the public, then we cannot uh, stay away from folks that are uh, working, that work with us that may not be godly. That's impossible. But that's where God give us, told us to go into the highways and the, uh, and the hedges and to compel them. But what it's saying there is if you know to do good and do it and not, the scripture says that to you it's a sin. In other words, you know it's a, a not right for a Christian to bar hop on Friday and Saturday and then try to come in the house of God on Sunday and Wednesday and think that they're a child of God filled with the Holy Ghost and the God-fearing anointing of Jesus Christ. Yep, amen. Both ways. Yep. Yes, and it goes both ways. And you'll have it both ways, though. In one day and out the next. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's sad that we've got a lot of church folk like that. They're only saved on when their church doors is open. Or when they're in the presence of church folk. Yeah. That is stained, I mean yourself away from evil as much as you can. To restrain yourself, yeah. yeah. One thing my mama used to say was uh, she would hate to think that she caused someone to go to hell because they saw her not living like a Christian. Right. Mm -hmm. My mama wasn't perfect by any means, but she, she avoided places where she knew she should not go. Yeah. Such yes. as bars, you know, hang out, talky talks, whatever. Yeah. And she always tried to, you know, portray herself as a Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would hate to think I caused someone to go to hell. Watch me. Verse 23 says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. Yeah. Yeah. Not holy as in he's holy, so be ye be holy as he's holy, but holy as your entire body, from head to toe. Yeah. Every every uh, morsel of your being. Yeah. Yeah. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. Yeah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Anybody got anything they want to say today? Anything they want to add? You know, something uh, Brother Kenny said this morning about all the people that claim to be a member of the church. Yeah. And haven't even been to church in yeah. a year, two years. Yeah. They still claim to be a member of the church. Yeah, they do. He yeah. said, and I'll just tell you what he said. <clears throat> you claim to be a member of the church, but you've not been for months or even years. You're using the church to try to cover up your sin. Yeah. 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 It's like way. using he them as a crutch. How, yeah, he preached how hard this morning, but I mean, it's good, you know. That's people right. need to hear it, but they use it as a crutch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I go to church. Yeah, I'm a member of a church. Yeah. When did you go to that church? Yeah. Uh, last year during the Easter holiday or, you know, who knows? Yeah. You know, that's, that's, we don't you know. know. We, when you read obituaries, <laughs> uh, it'll say that this person was a member of this church, yeah. and yeah. sometimes that person may have not been to that church in 15 no. years. Yeah. <laughs> but I tell you what, that's, that member of that church... It, it's good to be a member of a church if uh, you choose to call that church home. Yeah. But there's only one church that we need to definitely make sure that we are a member of, and that is the church of Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about the denomination, no, folks. No. I am talking about literally Jesus Christ and His blood that was shed for you and I. Yeah. Yes. yes. Anyone else? Yeah, it reminds me of what Harvey always said. 
34 days that he was sick. He was in the hospital 20 days. It didn't matter who came into his room. He'd always say, do you know Jesus? Yes. And they'd say, uh, some of them would not say nothing. And some of them would say, I go to church. And he would say, they can't even tell me they love Jesus. It's just, yeah. it's just so horrible. They use that as an excuse. I, I go to church. So yeah. they think that's going to shut you up. <laughs> Well, the, the, the world has and the world has deceived so many folks and yeah. pastors yeah. that they've got people believing the lie that as long as I go to church when yeah. the door is open, as long as I attend once a year, twice a year, uh, or as long as I put money in a, in a plate, or as long as I buy a pew for them to sit in their, their sanctuary that I'm saved, and that's not what it takes to be saved. I had I had a friend just a little while back. He had cancer, and this man, because he was in a wheelchair, an electric wheelchair, he 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 listened to church every Sunday morning, and so probably about a week before he died, him and I were talking, and he, I told him I said, "Hey, so I said, honey, I can't pray. I can't pray you." That's right. I says, you listen. You know the Bible. I mean, I knew he knew the Bible. Mm -hmm. I said, this has to be between you and him. That's right. I said, I love you to pieces, but I cannot pray you in heaven. No. It's a personal relationship, exactly. not a group right. uh, I mean, that's, relationship. I mean, he used to go to church when he was younger and everything, and then, of course, he strayed off. And as he got older... I believe, really with all my heart, I believe he knew the Lord, mm -hmm. you know, and like he, cause we talked a few times, you know, and because he go, don't preach to me. <laughs> but he'd look at me and he'd go, I'd say something about going to church. When I first started going before here, I'd go in the evenings with my friend. You go to church tonight? I said, no. He goes, you need to go to church. I said, you're like the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> but bless his heart, he, he, at the end of it, it was bad, you know. But he, I believe he talked to him. Amen. See, the building isn't the church anyway. Yeah, exactly. The church is each one of us as individuals. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and the only way each individual can be the church is if we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, uh, people take a lot of Christian people for granted. Yeah. Because we love the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a true Christian is going to show the love of God. Yeah. That's right. I mean, even if, you know, you slap us on one cheek, we're supposed to give you the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it just burns me up when people take advantage of people. Yes. I do that over and over and over again. Even Ian, way back, said, uh, you think uh, uh, the church would give me a job because they love God. they give me a job. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, he was just, you know, something out of him and his mind thinking, you know, they'll, they'll give to, you know, anybody. But people take people for granted, yeah. especially the ministers, the pastors. Yeah. You know, I've seen Brother Kenny get took for granted. You get took for granted because you're a godly man and you love the Lord and you want to be a light to them. You want to be an mm -hmm. example for them. But we don't need to take our men of God for granted. Right. You know, if right. you're going to be a, a child of God, you need to support whatever church you claim you go to. You need to be there as a body of Christ. Wow. The pastor depends on his members like the members depend on the pastor. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll stop preaching. Something came to mind long years ago that God called me to be a preacher, not to be a waiter. And the difference is a waiter is to wine and dine whoever they're serving. Wow. A preacher is a servant of Jesus Christ. Wow. And they are to give the infallible word of God. Yeah. Therefore, God did not call me to be your waiter to wine and dine you. He called yeah. me to be your pastor for this time. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And if I wine and dine and let everything go by that I don't think is right or that uh, I can see plainly does not line up with this scripture going on in the church house and I ain't much of a pastor. Yeah, yeah. Now, with that said, I'll say this 
Go ahead and shut up. There are those pastors who are hired. Yeah. They are hired. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the Bible said, Jesus told his disciples, I've received it freely. I give it to you freely. Go give it to the world freely. Oh, Am I saying there's something wrong with the pastor being paid? No. If the church is financially mm-hmm. fit to do that, I don't see that there'd be nothing wrong with it as long as that pastor is constantly yeah. at that church and yeah. going to the hospitals and the nursing homes doing all of that stuff full time. Yeah. I don't see nothing wrong with it. But here's the problem with the hirelings. Most of them, because they're hirelings and they know that, well, if I, if I run from here, then they'll place me over here and I, maybe I'll get a little bit more. When they see trouble come and the adversary walk through the door, they tuck tail and run. Yeah. And that's scripture, church. Glory to God. Yeah. But I make one make this clear. I don't take a dime from the church. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not one dime do I take as a salary because I as long as God's provided my needs, I don't need it. Amen. In fact, we took money out of our own pockets and bought food for people in the church. Mm-hmm. Money out of our or y'all's pocket and our, my, mine and Lisa's pocket to make sure bills are paid. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because that's what God called us to be, as servants. Servants to Him, but to one another. As long as it's not someone, like Angie said, taking advantage. Amen? Mom, if you'll come up, so you'll be here when they're through with this song. Praise the Lord. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus.